Today we're going to talk about uh, perimeter, area, and volume, and these are subjects out of geometry. Today we're going to talk about uh, perimeter, area, and volume, and these are subjects out of geometry. And before we get too far into the lesson here, I would like to try to explain what these things mean a little bit, these words. First of all, if you look at the word perimeter and break it into two parts, you have the prefix peri, and if you think of periscope, it means to look around. Perimeter, peri means around. Peri means around and meter means to measure. So perimeter is simply the measurement around a figure. And there's a key word that goes with perimeter that I like to use, and that's the word surround. You're going around the figure, so I use the word surround to go with perimeter. Now area, on the other hand, is the key word with area is to cover. It is to cover. And I'm going to come back and talk about these in just a little more, in just a moment. But area means to cover. Volume implies that you should fill. Okay, now let's look at the key words. What are you going to surround a geometric figure with? Let's look at a rectangle, for instance. We need to get around that rectangle. What should we surround it with? Well, the answer to that is you surround it with segments. And you can start one of the segments here, and then you just lay that same size segment all the way around the outside of that figure, and then you count the segments. So in this particular case, the perimeter would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of those segments. Now, you also have to make another choice here. How big are the segments? Well, some of the segments will be only one inch. Some of the segments may be one centimeter. Some of the segments may be, well, three feet. Let's go to that first, a yard. Or a little bigger than that, they might be a meter. If you have an unusually large figure, perhaps the length of that segment might be a mile. So you have to choose how long the segment is going to be, and then you lay that same size segment around the figure to surround it. And when you count the number of segments, that is the perimeter. When we look at area, we're talking about covering. And let's take the rectangle again. And mathematicians a long time ago decided they would cover these geometric figures with squares. They would cover them with squares. So they decide, just like the kind of segment over here, they decide on a certain size square to use and then they start putting those squares over the rectangle to cover it. And then when you counted the number of squares necessary, that was your area. So for instance, if, uh, if I took a square that was this size, something here, those are all supposed to be the same size. Then the area of this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Just count the squares. Now we're going to find later on that there's formulas that will help us count these things. We don't have to physically go through and count them one by one. We will be able to have a formula that tells us how many squares or segments there should be. When we talk about volume, that applies to a three-dimensional figure. And this one's a little more difficult to draw, of course, because it's three dimensions. But we're going to fill 
that figure, and what do you think we might fill it with? that takes up space because we're going to fill this up and if we just think a little bit of geometry, we're doing this with segments, we're doing this with squares, our next step might be what? There you go, good for you, perfect. Fill it with cubes. So you decide what size cube you want and then you just start packing them in there, layer by layer by layer. And if you count those cubes, the number of them that you use is the volume. Now, I'm not going to attempt to try and draw this thing full of cubes. So you need to use your imagination a little bit here. But we're going to take a cube out the upper one in here just to show you I can do it. If I want. There's a cube down in the corner. And we would just fill up that first layer and then add another layer and so on until we're right up to the top and it's now full. You filled it and the number of cubes in there is volume. Now let's go back and mention that we have a formula for doing these things. Let's go back and see what that formula is. If we're dealing with perimeters, usually we use the letter P for perimeter and the perimeter should be found by if we measure one of these sides, and let's suppose it's 10 inches, how many segments, one inch long, will fit there? 10, sure, exactly, 10. If it's 5 inches long and we choose inches again, there will be 5. If it's um, 50, 50 feet, and we use feet as our segment, one foot long, then there will be 50 of them along that side. So the measurement of that side will tell us how many segments are there of a given size. So, this side and that side in a rectangle are exactly the same size. And if we call this piece the length, and we'll use L to represent length, if we call that length, to get around this thing and surround it, we need two of the lengths added in. We also need to add on to that the two other sides, which we'll call the width. So that becomes your formula then for perimeter of a rectangle. Let's look at area here quickly. If I measure this side and it's five inches long, how many squares will fit upon that side? Five, exactly. And if I measure two inches up here and each square is one inch, how many squares high? Two. So in this row there would be five, there's actually four in the picture, but I presume there's five. And there would be two rows, so the number of squares in the whole thing is the number in each row times the number of rows. Well, this side tells me how many will be in each row, and this side tells me how many rows there will be. So the area turns out to be length multiplied. For volume, if this side was five inches, if it, if it were five inches, how many cubes one inch on the side would fit along that side? Five. If it were two inches wide, so I could put another square in there like, or another cube in there like that, how many cubes wide would it be? Two. So the first layer would have all these cubes in it. 
10, wonderful, 2 times 5. How many layers would there be if this is 3 inches high? 3 layers, exactly. So the volume can be calculated by taking, we'll call this length, we'll call this width, and we'll call this height. And if I multiply those three together, that will give us the volume. Again, this multiplication here tells us how many are on the bottom layer, and this tells us how many of those layers will stack up. We're going to have an opportunity now to practice with the formulas that we had on the board. And I would like to take this rectangle, which is a pretty cool one, I can draw a little better one than that. And let's suppose that that rectangle is three feet on that side and five feet on that side. And let's suppose that we want to find the perimeter. The formula again for perimeter is two lengths plus two widths. And now how long is this rectangle? How long? Five feet, that's correct. And how wide? Three feet. I will want to keep those labels in there. So the perimeter is twice five feet, and it's also twice three feet. So the perimeter becomes ten feet plus six feet, and since those are both feet, we can add them together. And you already had the answer for us here before. That's great. 16 feet is the perimeter. So if we want to surround that rectangle, 16 feet is where we need to do that. Let's take the same rectangle and look at area for a moment. Same rectangle. Again, the length is 5 feet. The width is 3 feet. And we want area. Got to be thinking about squares here, remember when it's area. And the formula for area is length multiplied by width. And the length, 5 feet, width, 3 feet, just like it was before. So area is 5 feet multiplied by 3 feet. And now we have a little bit of a problem. What do we do with feet times feet? I mean, all we to do with that? Square. There you go, it's square. Just like x times x is x squared, or y times y is y squared. Feet times feet is feet squared. Now, look at what just happened. It's telling us how many squares, one foot by one foot, feet squared. And 5 times 3 is 15. So it appears that we're going to need 15 squares, one foot on a side. So this is telling us 15 squared, one foot on the side, to cover that. Let's, let's look at volume and give an example, and then we can move on to something else. So we have a exahedron here, or perhaps you call it a box, I don't know, which you're most familiar with. And let's suppose we have three centimeters, four centimeters, Five centimeters. Volume, according to the formula, is length multiplied by width multiplied by height. The length of this would, well, you have kind of a choice. Either five centimeters or three centimeters. The width would be the other one of those. And the height would be? Four centimeters, that's correct. You want to include the centimeters, that's important. You missed the magnetic So now we're going to multiply uh, five centimeters times three centimeters times four centimeters. And just like the previous problem, we have a little bit of a snag here. Centimeters, centimeters, centimeters becomes cubic centimeters. So centimeters cubed. So there's the hint that we're talking about volume because it's cubed. And the numbers are 15 times 4, 
So what this answer is telling us is that it's going to take 60 cubes centimeter aside in order to fill up that. 